Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin, and this is Katie Hartley. And we're going to take a look back at some of the things that have been going on this week. And let's start with our own Arizona Cardinals losing a heartbreaker to the Washington Redskins this weekend. 22 to 21. Lots to talk about from this game. So, Kendra, let's start with your biggest disappointment and biggest biggest success of the game. Well, my biggest disappointment, again, was the defense. I just think they have a lot to clean up as we look right there at Patrick Peterson missing a tackle. I know they're young. The cornerbacks are young. But what about the other guys? Kerry Rhodes, you know, Adrian Wilson. I'm kind of expecting a little bit more out of them. I think the front line is doing pretty good, though, as far as the defense goes. But 932 yards of total offense they have given up in the first two games. That is the most since 1940. I think that is still the area they need the most work on. And that's not acceptable, and neither are the penalties. The penalties killed me this weekend to watch them. The Arizona Cardinals had 10 penalties for 97 yards. The Washington Redskins, of course, getting five first downs because of those penalties. They will continue to lose games unless they fix that, and for me, it's because they're not disciplined, and that is what kind of what scares me, especially about this team right now. Yeah, it's probably maybe a little bit more mental even than mm -hmm. physical with that. And my positive, though, was Beanie Wells in the rushing game. I know they only had 15 rushing attempts in the entire game, and we know they need to run the ball more. That's been a hot topic the past couple years, and it's kind of been the Cardinals' M.O. that maybe they don't run the ball as much as they should. But I think we saw from Beanie Wells in the second half, he really picked it up. And I think if they trust him a little more, give him a little bit more of the load, I think they could have some more success running the ball. And my positive is, of course, uh, on the offensive side of the ball as well. I like the way that Kevin Cobb looked. He was only 17 for 30, but he had 251 yards and two touchdowns. I think that this is the answer that this team needed at quarterback. And now they just need all the other pieces to come together to finally be a winning team. I really do hope we see that this season. Well, and it's one and one. They lost a game on the road to a Redskins team that is surprisingly 2-0 and on the season. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. They still have some time. And another big game from the weekend was uh, Michael Vick returning to Atlanta. We saw the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons go at it on Sunday night. Um, Kendra, what were your takeaways from that game? Well, first of all, I thought Michael Vick needs to figure some things out. I mean, he is... <laughs> bound and determined to almost get hurt. I mean, I was watching him run the ball, and he's carrying all these, you know, like a loaf of bread. First of all, you know, his <laughs> fumbles were not surprising. But then when he got hurt, I was not surprised. He had taken so many hard hits and hard tackles. And how many times have we heard these, these coaches, they want their quarterbacks to go down, but I think he was doing a little extra because he was playing in Atlanta against his former team. Mm -hmm. And, of course, all the Eagles fans holding their breath this week, wondering if Michael Vick is going to start this weekend. Andy Reid says he doesn't know yet. I, for one, am worried because Michael Vick is on my fantasy football team, so I would like him to get healthy. Um, but we also saw some interesting reaction from the Atlanta Falcon fans, of course, because this was the first time that Vick was back in Atlanta. Um, we see here them burning uh, Michael Vick jerseys. Excessive? I think it's excessive to burn the jersey. I mean, I think fans also have to remember what he did do for them when he was playing there. I mean, it's easy for guys, for them to all of a sudden hate these players when they come back on a different team. But he did a lot of good for them. And uh, I think Michael Vick, though, has to be a little careful. He was also pointing at the scoreboard when he did leave with that concussion up by 10 points, and they ended up losing. So Yeah, not good to taunt fans when you lose the game. I'm all right with the burning the jerseys. I think it's fine. <laughs> Um, and then another story from the weekend is the uh, boxing fight that we saw Floyd Mayweather and Victor Ortiz. Um, Floyd Mayweather, of course, winning this fight. There's a lot of controversy that was attached to this fight. Um, this photo right here is uh, Victor Ortiz headbutting Floyd Mayweather. Um, the fight was broken up shortly thereafter. Some people say that it was a cheap shot. We see it here. Um, during the timeout, the referee wasn't really paying attention, um, but this punch, of course, allowing Mayweather to win the fight. Well, some people are calling it a sucker punch, right. but I mean, technically, it was totally legal. I'm not a Floyd Mayweather Jr. fan. I think he's a punk. I think he's arrogant, and I have a lot of issues with him, but as far as the fight goes, I think it was actually legal, but I'm just not a fan of his. I mean, you know what? Ortiz has to be, he's got to have his guard up all the time. Those are the rules of boxing. Everyone who was there, those analysts, they said the same thing. I don't know why the referee wasn't watching, first of all. I mean, that was a little odd. But um, I, I don't think it was a big deal. I think he won fair and square, but he needs mm -hmm. to fight somebody real like Manny Pacquiao. Well, and, <laughs> and referees are human, and I think we just saw the human error of, of having a, 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 
a human referee and that they are going to get distracted and, and things like that are going to happen. I would have done the same thing if I was Mayweather. So I didn't really see anything wrong with it. Was it kind of a cheap shot? I, I don't know. I guess so. But that's what boxing's all about. Like you said, you know, you got to have your guard up all the time. I just don't know if he deserves to make $20 million a fight. I wish people would boycott him. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it for us this week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. I'm at Kinder620, and she is at FunKatie620. And join us next week for another episode of The Better Half.